Hi dudes, what's going on? It's finally here. World 3 in 5 minutes or less. I gotta say dude, you guys been hammering down in the comment section saying you want this video. So I put other things on halt to make sure this video gets out. Anyways, let's get into it. Congrats, welcome to the Frostbite Tundra, aka World 3. Before we do anything, make sure to hammer down and complete the story quest. This will unlock key mechanics for World 3. We've got three skills to tackle. Worship, Trapping, and Construction. Let's start with Worship. Wizard is our specialized class for Worship. You have two different areas that will need their own videos just to explain, so let's give a brief rundown. You can buy your first skull in World 3 store and upgrade it from Anvil to start gaining a thing called Worship Charge. This is for obtaining souls. Souls are needed for practically everything, from crafting to upgrades. Wizards are insane at Worship due to their talent known as Charge Siphon which steals charge from all your other characters and allows you to use them on your wizard for souls. However, this will only give you XP to your wizard when using this ability, so stronger the skulls on all your characters, the more soul charge for you to use. Each soul is located at a shrine. For example, the totem at Forest Outskirts will give you four souls. You have two buttons. You have the Worship, which will reward you with souls, which will increase depending on skill efficiency and the highest wave, and Summon, which brings us to the second half. Tower Defense. Tower Defense can be activated at any totem, and each one has its own stage filled with their mascot for that totem. Get a max wave in order to increase the amount of souls given per totem, which will be essential in later game progression. Specialize early game focusing on Boulder Roller, Party Starters, Frozen Malone, and Storm Callers when unlocked and will be essential to level, and further, I'll explain where to level them. Quick tip, playing Hunter and Tower Defense is super OP due to their kick ability and root ability. It's trapping time. This is where your hunter comes in. Trapping is also huge for in-game progression. Trapping box can also be bought at the World 3 shop and you can craft better ones at the anvil. Go to the location of the critter and place a trap by having it equipped in your tools. Set a timer on each character and when that timer has expired, you can go and pick it up manually or you could do it a complete easier way to maintain sanity is the hunter ability known as Eagle Eye. This ability allows you to into your trapping interface that lets you collect all traps on that character and replaces it. Trust me when I say this, manually collecting is literally the worst thing in the world. Just trust me, do Eagle Eye, take the deficit of critters and XP, because you will literally lose your mind by doing this. It's the most mundane, monotonous thing ever, and it gets better with trapping drone from construction and vials, so just trust me. Just use Eagle Eye. I got a trapping guide for further explanation, which I would strongly suggest. Okay, so this part is thick. The amount of mechanics in this skill is rough, but I think I can sum it up real quick. Squire is construction. You have three areas, building zone, cog board, and refinery. Refinery is located to the left of the wooden table. To start producing salts, have the material needed in your storage, turn off to on to start making your salts. What materials needed here and how many it takes per cycle. A cycle is usually 15 minutes and later on an hour and can be changed with a node, but that's later on. And if you want a quick tip, never stop printing red salts. Always upgrade your red salts to the highest rank you possibly can. Start getting this going ASAP. Cogboard is the second tab in the wooden table, which allows you to craft cogs and add cogs to the board to increase build rate. Flaggy rate, which is to unlock new cogs with the pink flags, and XP, which will increase the amount of XP you get. Each character has a base build rate. Higher the level, the more the build rate. Drag and drop cogs and players onto the board to start getting their build rate. How you build cogs is you open the cog, top, middle, left, and drag a character in there to start constructing a cog and hit claim button. Rule of thumb, always prioritize XP cogs. You can check that by taking a look at the eye at the very top. And the biggest one, the build tab. This is where you get stupidly insane buildings. So you remember when I said do the main quest line? This should have given you two star talent books, printer sampling and shrine architect. Have at least one point in each and add them to your hotbar. Shrine Architect lets you place shrines at any map to give buffs based on what you place, and this is where you build it. Each shrine can be leveled up and unlocked to increase its level up rate because of level shrines to make them stronger. Because to level shrines to make them stronger is they have to stay on the same map for a specific amount of hours and resets when you move them. All shrines are located at the bottom of the building, and should be at least unlocked as soon as possible. On the middle line are your tower defense towers, where you unlock more towers and upgrade them so they cost less and do more damage. Also, sometimes increase range. And our top line is where most mechanics are lying within. 3D printer, which allows you to take samples with using the star talent to allow you to 3D print any skilling or monster base material. So example, 3D printer allows you to take samples with using that star talent 
to allow you to 3D print any skilling or monster base materials. So example, green spores, you'll get spore caps to print with your 3D printer, which prints that amount every hour. Leveling it up will increase the amount of players that can use it. Talent Book Library allows you to book most of your talents to a higher max cap. So baseline talent is 100. You can book it to make it up to 125 or as high as 160 just to give it some extra juice. Death Note introduces multi-kill, which means you can get more than one kill per mob. Must have 100% accuracy and 1.5 times max damage of the monster's health. Upgrading this one will increase base multi-kill. Massive multi-kill guide right here. Salt Lick is a station that has its own upgrades. Buying anywhere from 3D printer sample size to bigger damage. Chest storage. Well, you guessed it. It's more storage. Cost Cruncher reduces the amount needed for the building upgrades. Super handy, actually. And later game, you'll get the last two, which is Trapper Drone and Automation Arm. Trapper Drone is an all-in-one trapping interface from placing to collecting. This thing has it all, and it scales off Eagle Eye. Automation Arm introduces, well, automation. Every time you build a new one and unlocks another perk for it, this is a quality of life to the max. Get this as soon as possible for a smooth idle on experience. Automation Arm will also give you the easy automation totem, which allows you to gain souls from any place with a wave of 10 or higher. By the way, I still don't get it how the people keep on saying it's not five minutes or less. Uh, last time I checked, it's uh, five minutes. Just watch it at two times speed. And one more thing to cover is the prayer stones. Now the prayers give you a buff, but also give you a curse. Most of these, if not all of these, can be unlocked from tower defense and can be upgraded with souls. Equip these at your own discretion. Now that we got all that together, what should we be focusing on? Well, for one, alchemy, of course. Make sure to keep leveling these bubbles up, especially Shackercy and FMJ. These should be about 30 to 50 is a good mark. And at the same time, start focusing on six other bubbles. Bubble 9 in the orange, green, and purple cauldron, which all of these increase total damage percent. And bubble number 5 which gives you base damage based on MP, HP, and movement speed. This will help for the pushing and making sure to get multi-kill. Stamps, of course, keep leveling these up. And same with the post office, if you can. There's also a boss located at Refrigeration Station, aka Bloke's Map. You need a craftable in the third anvil called the Bucket of Slush to summon the boss known as the Diplodated Slush. This recipe can drop from various mobs in World 3. Go to Bloke's and drop the bucket on the snow pile to summon the boss and take them down to receive candies, keys, etc. But be careful, these are really strong monsters. For Merit Shop, you should prioritize Mob Respawn, one in Telekinetic Storage, which is a talent, so make sure to assign it to your hotbar, Max Books, Food and Build Slots, Salt Cost, and then finally, Cheezor Armor is kind of hard to craft, but it rewards you with a ton of total percent damage. You can go this route if you choose, but I personally prefer not to because of budget reasons. As your progression through the World 3, the armor should go as follows. About halfway through, start getting Plat to Dementi Armor, followed by Chaotic Amarok Pendant, which is craftable. You can get the materials from Chaotic Amarok for weapon power, or the Bludgeon. Choose to raid Rex Rings or be able to upgrade to Tenacity Rings for total damage percent. If you have done your party dungeons, and starting on your glacial weapons. At the end of World 3, you should be focusing on getting Void Armor, Void Weapons, Cheese or Scarf, and eventually Caustic Cheese or Scarf, and then the Tenacity Rings, or the rings that drop from the Dedidated Rams. And if you're at this point, you won't be quite strong enough to tackle World 4, so I'd suggest to work on card farming, getting levels, getting everyone iron tools for easy stat stick, carry capacity, and getting your Party Dungeon Flurbos passive stats maxed, because you're going to need a bare minimum of 1 million damage to successfully push part way through world four yeah you you heard that right absolutely but good thing i have a combat guide to help build all total damage and base damage percent make sure to watch that trust me it's going to be a lifesaver but we are a little ways from that so progress through world three by doing the quests along the way to get to neptunes enter cheese or defeat him get the gem hand in the gem to the cardinal and congrats welcome to world four there you go my dudes world three in five minutes or less if watching at two times speed Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for future notifications and make me a happy man. And let me know in the comment section below what you think about the new change in edits, by the way. We also have a new editor, so make sure to give him some love. Also, check me out at Twitch for great stream content and Discord. We are still guild recruiting for the three guilds. So if you want an active, fun-loving guild, join the Discord and sign up today. Anyways, my dudes, tune in for our next Eidolon video. Stay safe, happy grinding, and peace out.